Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and this is the first of two tutorials that are going to be looking at how we create these slide-in text animations in Final Cut Pro 10. The first is going to have a look at how we create this with keyframes in Final Cut Pro 10, and in the second tutorial we're going to have a look at how we create this in Apple Motion. Now if you're looking for plugins to purchase for Final Cut Pro 10 for either text animations, transitions, or graphic effects, then I definitely recommend taking a look at FX Factory, who are sponsoring this video. So grab a look at the link below. They have a lot of very cool plugins in there. But without further ado, let's have a look at how we create this title animation in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing we're gonna do here is clear our timeline. So I'm just gonna delete everything from the timeline here, and we're gonna start from scratch. I'm grabbing one of my intros to one of my videos here. So basically we have me talking here a little bit, and once we've got kind of 10 seconds that will be enough so I'm just going to trim that down using alt on the right square bracket and this is going to form the backdrop for our video. So the first thing we need to do is grab our graphic background so we're going to jump into our generators up here and scroll down the bottom where we can find our texture and solid generators down at the bottom here. So we can use a colorfulness or a texture um, or one of the different backgrounds that you can find up here as our background to our type. We are going to grab one of the textures here and we're going to go for the paper textures. We'll just drop this down to the timeline and actually we'll stretch this out just a little bit more so that we have a nice kind of 10 second period of this. So with the paper generator um, we have some options up in the inspector. If you don't see the inspector just go to window, show in workspace and highlight the inspector here. Just make sure the check mark is next to that. And we can change this uh, to cardboard paper one, paper two, and we have a variety of kind of different textures um, for these backgrounds. We're gonna grab watercolor two for this particular example, uh, and I'm gonna add a tint color to this. So we're gonna grab a sort of nice dark blue for this and increase the tint amount. And that's just gonna mean that our text is gonna nice and easily stand out from the background here when we actually add it. So we're gonna lay this out as we want it to be when the animation is finished. So we're gonna set up this background texture first of all and then just crop it from the right so we'll crop this all the way from the right and you can slide the slider until you can't slide it anymore and then you can click and hold on the number here and we can get this in just the right position and now we're going to add our text so we're going to come up to our titles on the top left and we're looking for the bumper opener titles here where we can find the basic title and we drop this down over the top of our paper layer here. So with the basic title in there, we're gonna move this over to the left and in the title options, we'll just double click up here at the top and hide our effects. And we're gonna align this to the left. And when you're designing with type, often you won't have the text that you need uh, right from the outset. So I like to use this website um, that has this lorem ipsum text. So lipsum.com is the URL or web address of the website. And we're just gonna generate some text here and we'll grab a few lines of this to drop into our design in Final Cut Pro. So we'll come back to Final Cut Pro and we've got our title here and then we've got our Latin text here. So basically for our type we're going to drop the size down of this just a little bit. Okay we'll move it across the left a little bit and with this basic title we need to add in our own line break so we are gonna just break this line up a little bit and we'll just go through this and break our lines up so we have our text a little smaller again and we'll just get this to kind of flow nicely so when we set this up in Apple Motion we'll be able to get the text to wrap into a particular point on the screen a bit more easily um, but in Final Cut Pro 10 unfortunately we have to do this kind of manual editing uh, with the type options that we have and then we'll select this block of type and we'll just add a bit more line spacing uh, between these lines. We're going to grab the title here we'll change this to all caps it's a quick way of dealing with any capitalization errors and then change the all cap size to 100% and we'll make this bold. So basically now we have our title here on the left and we can just nudge it around and position it until we're happy with where it's sitting. So basically the way I always like to do these animations in Final Cut Pro 10 is to animate backwards. So I'm gonna set keyframes 
for my background and for my text at the point at which I want the animation to finish. So if I play this through, by around this point, my animation would be all done. So I'm gonna highlight my paper background here and we're gonna to come to the transform button in the middle here. And this allows us to add a keyframe up here. So basically we're adding a keyframe where the animation is gonna finish. And then we're gonna go back in time to the beginning and then we can drag this paper off screen. Okay, and make sure it kind of snaps to the middle there so we don't get any gaps at the top and the bottom. So you can see now that we'll play in a nice speed and then we'll come back to where we want our type to finish. So this is gonna lock into place and then our type is gonna finish animating just after that locks into place. So with my title selected now, um, just after that paper animation is finished, I'm gonna add a keyframe and then I'm gonna go back. So play this through and it's around about here when we're about halfway in that I want my text to start animating. So I'm gonna go back here and just make sure I have my text all the way off screen. And so now what we'll see is when it plays on, we'll get that nice kind of snap of those two elements. So the paper animates on first, and then we get our title snapping into place. Now if our timing's not right, and we can right click on our clips in the timeline and show the video animation. And we'll do this for both of these. So you can see if we play this back through, I wanna speed this up a little bit. So it's a little bit slow. So we'll just drag these back a little bit. Okay, so you can see we can get that text and the animation to be quite nice and snappy when it animates on. Okay, and I'm gonna turn off the transform options here. I'm just gonna nudge my text a little bit further to the left just to kind of get that lining up nicely. So you can see here, we animate on, and that's basically the kind of first step of doing this animation in Final Cut Pro 10. And then obviously at the end, we wanna animate off. So we're gonna to come to the end here. And what I wanna do is add a keyframe for both of these at the point at which we wanna start the animation. So I'm gonna grab my transform options here again, add a keyframe, and then my title is gonna animate off. And by around about this point, we're all done. So we'll drag to the left and then my title is animating and then as my title just starts to animate I'm going to highlight my background add a keyframe up here and then just get it to follow that title so it's going to finish a little bit after the title but basically you can see now we animate off and that's nice and smooth so essentially this is what we have here so we play through our title will animate on with the background it will hold so it can be read and then at the end of that, it will animate off. Now we wanna get this background to kind of follow that a little bit. So I'm gonna hide these. So essentially what I want to happen is when this pushes on, I want it to look like it's kind of pushing me across to the right on the screen there. So basically we're gonna animate the background here as well. So I'm gonna highlight the background and around about this point, we want the animation to be finished, so I'm gonna add a keyframe, and then we'll come back, and then somewhere around about here when that paper starts to push on, we want the animation to start, so I'm gonna add a keyframe here. So basically, we've got those two keyframes, and when we've added keyframes, we wanna make sure we edit on the same keyframe, so we don't wanna add other keyframes in between, it'll kind of create a little bit of bumpiness. So I'm gonna use these arrows up here to navigate between the two keyframes that I added for my background video. And then on this second keyframe, I'm gonna drag this across. So we've got me centered there. And you'll see now that when this plays on, it's gonna kind of slide me across the right there quite nicely. So we'll come to the end. And then as this starts to animate off, the video is gonna follow. So I'm gonna keep that video highlighted. I'm gonna to toggle my transform so that I get my keyframes back and then we'll play through and then around about this point in time we want the video to be back across the left so I'm going to drag that across and you should see the yellow bars highlighting that it's back dead center 
and we can also check that up here as well so you can see my position is 0 0.2 and 0 so I can type in a 0 up here in the inspector so now we nudge myself across to the right there with the text it looks quite nice and then once that's done it's gonna slide back and we're back into the central position so that's working pretty nicely we can also if we select this clip I'm just going to double click at the top here to minimize my inspector and then we're going to bring up the effects the other effect that we can use here as well um, is a drop shadow so I'm going to just type in drop shadow or drop making sure that I've got all video and audio selected and drop this onto this layer here so you can see now we're starting to get a little drop shadow that pops up there if I come to my video options I'm going to turn off my transform options you can see I've got my drop shadow options up here so I can increase the blur and stuff and I can also do that um, across here too so I can modify where that drop shadow falls so I'm just going to make it look a little bit more 3D just by dropping it across here and we'll add a little bit more blur and because that's attached to the layer that's animated the drop shadow will animate as well so you can see now animates on nice drop shadow there text is nice and clear on the background because we've got that tint there and then we animate off so super nice super easy if we want to duplicate this in Final Cut Pro 10 we can obviously copy these two layers and kind of keep that animation um, so if I copy this extend down the timeline where we might want another animated title we'll just zoom out there so I can paste that on and now you can see I can just modify my text for this example and then move those two around together if I need to speed things up and slow them down I can always right click and show the video animation and right click and show the video animation here and that will give me a lot of control even in Final Cut Pro 10 for these kind of motion graphics animations now when we do this in motion we can set it up so that we don't have to modify those keyframes we'll have a build in and a build out and we'll also be able to nudge the background all in one go so that's kind of what's really exciting about motion is we can build a lot of what we're doing manually here with the keyframing um, all in Apple Motion but if you're only working in Final Cut Pro 10 and you need to get this job done then these kind of techniques will work for you really nicely so hopefully this has been useful um, definitely do go and check out the second of this series of videos sponsored by FX Factory we'll be using in that second tutorial Apple Motion to build our own plugin um, so basically if you've got Apple Motion you can follow along create your own plugins for Final Cut Pro 10 and learning motion is a really great thing to do it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run if you're creating a lot of graphics content for your videos so if you have any questions about this leave them below otherwise let's dive in to the second of these two tutorials and have a look at how we work with this in Apple Motion